हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दी कोर्स ऑन मकेनिक्स ऑफ मशीनिंग टुडे इज दी ट्वेंटी लेक्चर ऑफ दिस कोर्स दिस इज द लास्ट लेक्चर इन द नाइनटीन लेक्चर्स वी हैव स्टडीड द मकेनिक्स ऑफ मशीनिंग वी वी डिस्कस्ड वेलियस टाइप ऑफ मशीनिंग प्रोसेसेस एंड अबाउट द कटिंग फोर्सेज एंड सरफेस रफनेस obtained in those processes these processes used a wedge shape tool this type of tool was used in all these processes which did the cutting uh, action so there was a physical contact between a wedge shape tool and the material and the force was applied on the tool then the material was removed in the form of the chips that is the basic process so in that we discussed turning process using a lathe machine in that there is a tool that is called single point uh, cutting tool and then of course we discussed about milling process in which there were number of uh, teeth in a cutter and these were doing the machining but there also each individual uh, tooth was uh, like a wedge shaped tool so it used to remove the material in the form of the chips then uh, similarly we discussed about drilling in which there were two uh, cutting edges simultaneously cutting the material we also discussed about the boring process which is like turning process in which there was a single point cutting tool shaper is there which is also similar to turning process and we also discussed the grinding process in which instead of any one um, cutting tool there were number of abrasive particles and each abrasive particle can be considered as a single point cutting tool albeit with very high rake angle negative rake angle suppose negative rake angle was of the order of say 45 or something like that and some grains were of course uh, of very uh, round shape also but still nevertheless there is a physical contact between the cutting tool and the workpiece and the tool which in a way properly guided because in grinding we were so these abrasive particles they were not loose rather they are properly embedded in a bonding material so these type of things were there but today i am going to discuss several advanced machining processes which deviate from the conventional pattern in this there are number of uh, uh, different type of energy sources implied of course there is a mechanical energy source is also there but the type of the interaction with the tool and the work piece is quite different from the conventional way many times suppose abrasive particles may be loosely bounded they may be moving in a random way such type of things are there so we will discuss these processes also this is only one lecture is assigned for that purpose so this is basically going to be introductory and uh, intention is only to provide exposure we will not discuss this in detail but you can pick up this type of things and maybe if you get a opportunity to do another course of on advanced machining processes then this background will help you a, a lot because you will already be knowing something about these processes so we discussed about these advanced machining processes they are little bit advanced from the conventional machining processes and uh, they are also called sometimes non traditional machining processes although which is non traditional today may become traditional tomorrow and these are also called non conventional machining processes but these are also becoming slowly conventional so anyway let us discuss various type of these processes so machining as you know is a process of removing the material from a work piece to create a part of desired shape size and surface finish that is the proper purpose of machining that we want to make a product which should be of desired shape it should be of desired size and it should be of desired uh surface finish in traditional machining the tool makes physical contact with the work piece 
and produces contact stresses which cause the fracture on the surface of the wall piece in the form of the chips material is removed it is unsuitable for machining of very hard material producing complicated and smaller shapes and for higher accuracy precision and surface integrity so we we look for the new type of processes because sometimes the material is too hard if it is harder than even the tool material then it is difficult to remove the material or the shape is too complicated which is very difficult to produce by conventional means or it is of very small shape if i want to make a very very small hole in a machine suppose say point um, 05 mm diameter hole may be very difficult by the conventional drill because that drill bit will break uh, so that is why we use and sometimes we need very high accuracy which may not be possible by conventional means precision also if we need very high repeatability of the process and then we need surface integrity also which should be very good suppose i don't want any residual stresses on the surface i want high surface finish naturally i have to look for new type of processes so it prompted researchers to invent novel ways of removing the material these are unconventional non traditional or advanced machining processes a distinguishing feature of advanced machining processes is that they don't use a well guided wedge shape tool to remove the material relative to work piece so they may use sometimes wedge shape tool but that is not well guided but sometimes they may use a well guided tool but it may, may not be wedge shaped also for example laser beam machining employs a well guided laser beam to remove the material by melting and all evaporation so we have a laser beam that is properly guided it can be fitted on a cnc table and it goes x y and z motion but it is not a tool that will make a physical contact in fact a beam is there which is traversing the way a tool is moving on a lathe machine so such type of laser beam machining comes in the category of advanced machining process now uh, let us classify the advanced machining processes one can classify advanced machining processes based on the material removal mechanism in the mechanical processes there is a physical contact between the work piece and another material means we have mechanical advanced machining processes in this there is a physical contact between the work piece and another material but that work piece and another material may be moving in somewhat random fashion sub example is ultrasonic machining so in ultrasonic machining usually there are some abrasive particles they undergo uh, ultrasonic type of motion means they they impact the work piece because ultrasonic vibrations are imparted then these materials these small powders they impinge on the body but uh, they are not very well guided like a tool in lathe machine similarly abrasive jet machining will be like that suppose there is air jet in which i mix up the abrasive particles so air jet is uh, being forced on the material and abrasive particles also attack and that's how that they uh, it machining is carried out in water jet machining there is jet of water that is making some contact and of course in that i can add some abrasive particles so it becomes a abrasive water jet machining abrasive flow machining also there are some abrasive particles they are embedded in a carrier medium that is viscous and that carrier medium is moving it is flowing on the work piece and that's how that uh, material removal will take place so these are you can see that these are loosely bonded abrasives mostly they have been used eh? yeah, and in water jet machining pure water jet machining there may not be abrasive particle but of course this uh, tool is a liquid actually and magneto rheological finishing in which magnetic force in some sense guides that motion so it is uh, that type of finishing is there and in chemical processes chemical reactions take place on the surface of the work piece that cause the removal of the material like photochemical machining so it is uh, those are chemical processes electrochemical machining is the process governed by the faraday's law 
electrochemistry so in this case uh, it is opposite of the deposition of the coating suppose we do the coating deposition it is opposite of that we remove the material then thermal based machining processes removes the material by melting and all vaporization so this is how that uh, like laser beam is one good example plasma machining may be plasma arc machining may be another example in iron beam machining instead of a laser beam a beam of iron bombards the material but the material is not removed by the thermal action or melting and vaporization rather those bombarding ions they have got lot of weight so they actually cause sputtering of workpiece items due to bombardment of a focused iron beam just like one ball uh, is hit then it can actually transfer its momentum to another ball and another ball starts moving so similarly the ions come and they hit um, atoms and they provide the movement to atoms and that's how the material is removed so that is called iron beam machining okay let us discuss mechanical type of processes that means mechanical processes or i would better name him, uh, name them as processes causing material removal due to stresses that means they in turn basically generate the stresses whatever is the process like in conventional material material is removed conventional machining material is removed by creating the stresses here although these are advanced machining processes here also the stress is created it is not like that laser beam where uh, there is no need to create stress rather melting is responsible but in this process which i am going to discuss now material is removed by stresses so force per unit area provides the traction vector on that plane if the traction vectors are known in three orthogonal planes the traction vector on any plane can be obtained this you know so in the material removal processes the stresses are produced in order to cause local failure of the material leading to separation of some material from the workpiece so in conventional machining stresses are produced by a wedge shape tool which generates contact stresses in the workpiece that is the thing which you know but in advanced manufacturing process the local stresses are produced in a variety of ways providing different types of material removal processes now some popular processes are described here ultrasonic machining now just see the diagram of ultrasonic machining i am imparting vertical ultrasonic vibrations these are the leads then i am circulating the water then this is a that harm the purpose is to amplify the vibrations then i have got a tool it is vibrating and then i have got a slurry of abrasive particles and maybe water as a carrier and this is vibrating so it is imparting that motion to those particles also and they are creating that uh, cavity just like uh, replica of a tool like that here this is the tool same type of cavity they will produce so in ultrasonic usm process a brushuge of size generally 15 to 150 micrometer are driven at high velocity against the workpiece tool oscillates at a high frequency high frequency means it may be in the range of 19 to 25 kilohertz that is ultrasonic range but amplitude is very low that is about 50 to 15 to 50 micrometer now this tool oscillates perpendicular to the surface to be machined and throws particles of different sizes on the workpiece so it actually throws particles of different sizes and these abrasive particles are suspended in a medium such as water thus they make slurry so you see that these particles this water may be injected in fact that slurry may be injected from a injecting pump and this is how that it is going so this setup you have seen typical abrasive particles are cubic boron nitride a very hard material aluminum oxide silicon carbide and boron carbide the process requires of course electrical energy because you have to get you have to assume equal vibration so first the low frequency electrical supply signal is transformed to a high frequency signal using an ultrasonic wave generator and um, then uh, the high frequency electrical signal is converted to high frequency linear 
mechanical motion by using a transducer that means piezoelectric or magneto strictive type piezoelectric uh, one is that uh, that if you be subject that uh, material to electrical field electric field then uh, and uh, we supply the, we provide the charge then it can undergo mechanical motion or vice versa that if there is a piezoelectric material or those materials suppose you uh, compress it then they develop charge and magneto strictive type materials are those which undergo the change in length in the magnetic field so the motion is transferred to, to the tool through a tool holder often called horn it is made of monal titanium and stainless steel and you see that horn has got this type of shape so basically it is bigger cross section here smaller cross section here so it basically amplifies the amplitude of vibrations okay now here most so uh, in piezoelectric transducers when the current passes through a piezoelectric crystal such as a quartz its length changes the principle is used to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy with a conversion efficiency up to 95 percent and magneto strictive materials usually do not have that much uh, high efficiency they have efficiency of only about 40 percent but they were considered to be more reliable nowadays piezoelectric crystals are also very reliable so usually in usm machines they are widely used so now uh, for achieving optimal material removal rate tool and tool holder are designed to cause resonance high amplitude of vibration this happens when frequency of electrical signal machine matches with the natural frequency of the moving parts and cutting takes place due to brittle fracture of the workpiece by the hard abrasive particles because they attack the material and USM kind machine hard more than 40 HRC and brittle material CG glass and ceramics etc. But uh, they cannot easily machine very ductile material even they will not be able to cut your skin so suppose you put your hand maybe the hand become remains safe so this type of thing um, may be useful when you have to cut only the brittle material it, even if it may be surrounded by ductile material ductile material will not be machined but brittle material will be easily machined this is ultrasonic actuator system is shown here uh, inductive energy transmission system then piezoelectric transducer is here then tool uh, interface is this one and vibration free mounting flange is there so these are the components and uh, uh, yes so this is the tool interface is fourth and the third one is uh, the piezoelectric transducers and in this is inductive uh, energy transmission system so this i have shown now it is uneconomical to machine ductile materials using USM abrasives are mixed with the water in a ratio of 1 is to 1 by weight so that is uh, what suppose you may have uh, 1 kg of uh, abrasive and 1 kg of water and you can make a swirly the water helps in avoiding thermal damage to workpiece generally the process generates negligible residual stresses so after machining very small amount of stresses are left on the surface applications can be in making holes in silicon nitride turbine blades for cooling purposes cutting up semiconductor parts it is used for engraving on the glass sintered carbide and diamond and it can be used by dentists for drilling holes in teeth the skin and flesh being soft and ductile would not get cut so this is very easy from that point of view that you have to use that USM so this one it is one process then I tell you about the other process that is abrasive jet machining in abrasive jet machining process material removal takes place due to heating up the workpiece with a jet of gas containing abrasive particles now the process can use dry air nitrogen carbon dioxide and helium typical parameters of AGM are as follows pressure may be 0.2 to 5 mega pascal that means 2 to 50 bar 2 to 50 atmospheric pressure jet velocity can be 150 to 300 meter per second that is mostly subsonic range because 330 meter per second is the velocity 
of any sound uh, velocity in the air and the diameter of the nozzle typically can be 0 0.075 to 1 millimeter. Now, it is a schematic of a brushwood jet machining is shown here. You are seeing that there is a compressed air, this is a symbol for compressor. Now, there is a drain separator, if there is any moisture etcetera that is actually separated from here, then there is a, it is stored in the some air tank, even if power supply is not there, compressed air will be stored in that air tank. Then filter, regulator and lubricator unit is there, its purpose is to remove the dust particles and also it is regulator means it regulates the quantity going there and lubricator means some amount of lubricator may be added here with the air so that if it is going inside the some moving parts like in a piston cylinder so it should not get damaged and then whole thing is going in a mixing chamber and from here I am feeding the abrasive feed then air plus abrasive is coming through this nozzle and then it is machining and you have got this type of workpiece shape you have got. Now erosive action of the abrasive particles removes the material from the workpiece surface Aluminium oxide, silicon carbide, crushed glass, cubic boron nitride, glass beads and sodium bicarbonate are the popularly used abrasive particles. So, these are the abrasive particles. Elements of AJM are abrasive feeder, gas propulsion system, AJM nozzle, machining chamber and abrasive. Now, gas propulsion system generally supplies gas to propel abrasive particles. Now, required quantity of abrasive particles is supplied by abrasive feeder as you have seen and the quantity is controlled by inducing vibration to the feeder. If I vibrate, then the more quantity will come. If I increase the vibration, more quantity will come like that I can control the quantity. Machining chamber is closed from outside environment to avoid the pollution of atmosphere. Now, AJM nozzle is usually made of high wear resistant tungsten carbide or sapphire actually. Stand of distance that is distance between the nozzle tip to workpiece surface is maintained at 0.75 to 1 millimeter for getting the maximum material removal rate. So, stand of distance is actually very very small that is about maximum about 1 mm. Stand of distance is the distance between the nozzle tip and the workpiece. This is the nozzle tip suppose like this and then this is the workpiece. Okay. So, this and this gap. Applications are used for trimming, debugging, cleaning and polishing. It is suitable for machining hard and brittle materials, can produce fine and complicated shapes. Abrasive jet can access the internal portion that is another advantage. Suppose I have got many holes in an inaccessible area and they have to be debugged means bulbs have to be removed, this may be good process. Then manufacturing of some electronic devices, we use that. Now, water jet machining process also called hydrodynamic machining works on the principle of the effect of erosion of a high velocity and a small diameter jet of water on the workpiece surface. Now, it uses a high pressure and high velocity water stream against the workpiece for cutting operation. So, it is that suppose I am sending that high pressure water and then it is a nozzle and then water stream is coming, then it is a catcher which catches the water here. So, it uses high pressure and high velocity against the workpiece. Fine stream of water can be obtained from a small nozzle with a diameter of 0.1 to 0.4 mm. So, diameter of the nozzle is very small just like it is a blade of 0.1 to 0.4 mm uh, thickness. Typical pressure in the nozzle is 400 mega Pascal that means about 4000 atmospheric pressure can produce a jet of velocity up to 900 meter per second very high velocity that may be uh, more than the speed of the sound. And high pressure is generated through a combination of IL pump and intensive IL. Intensive IL amplifies the IL pressure by about 40 times. So, it is basically intensive IL is a arrangement of a piston cylinder type of thing and then it can intensify this one. Now that suppose uh, principle is like this, suppose you have got a big cylinder with a piston and then after that it is connected with a small cylinder like that 
so it is it is it is like this so suppose i apply that force pressure p1 here and this area is e1 so this force which gets transmitted there in this small one is p1 a1 but this area is only a2 okay so the fo same force is getting transferred so p1 a1 will be p2 a2 and therefore p2 will become p1 a1 by a2 now a1 by a2 ratio i can control a suppose a1 is 10 times than a2 then p2 becomes 10 times of p1 so this is the intensifier so this type of thing can be done to intensify the pressure to minimize pulsation in water pressure and accumulator is used accumulator basically stores it is like a fly wheel in mechanical system so it uh, just stores that whenever there is a shortage of pressure then uh, accumulator can supply the liquid and uh, at, uh, so uh, it is uh, also important that because those pipe lines which are carrying that high pressure water they have to be very strong so they are generally auto fitted and swing fitted tubes auto fitting is an operation in which by means of the earlier plastic deformation we produce residual stresses on the tube generally we produce compressive stresses in the inner side and uh, tensile on the outer side so pressure carrying capacity gets enhanced it can take more amount of hoop stress and uh, swing fitting means that there is a tube on top of that uh, i fit another tube so, uh, by a swing fit so if i fit a uh, by swing fit so what will happen that because it is swing fitted means its diameter was uh, smaller bore diameter of the outer tube was smaller than the outer diameter of inner so it is causing a type of compression type of that material so that is why it is getting compressed okay so good filtration system is essential to remove the small particles in water during operation a noise catcher is also needed noise catcher is shown here and uh, this uh, process parameters for wjm means water jet machining are stand up distance that is how much distance is there between the nozzle and uh, workpiece and then the nozzle diameter then pressure then feed right then stand up distance should be 1 to 3 mm so that fluid should not disperse before reaching to the work surface applications of water jet machining can be thick material can be machined at low feed rate with high pressure cutting floor tile in uh, work because uh, in the cutting of tile otherwise lot of dust is generated which may be harmful for the operator but in this water jet will be nice thing because water will carry away those dust and carpet you can cut in textile industry you can use it leather industry you can cut the leather this one even one shoe industry is making use of this water jet cutting then plastic you can cut composites you can cut and also used for cutting composite wire stripping and debugging process then water jet at low pressure that is 60 to 200 mega pascal that means about uh, 600 to 2000 atmospheric pressure has been used to cut insulation of the cable without damaging the metallic cable when there is a need to can, um, there is a need of cutting very hard and thick metallic parts then abrasive water jet machining process is more appropriate than water jet machining in abrasive water jet machining the abrasive particles are homogeneously mixed with water stream that impinges on the workpiece surface with a very high kinetic energy and water and abrasive streams come from two different rigid pipes and these two streams mix in the mixing chamber before passing through the nozzle then the abrasive used in this process are aluminium oxide powder silicon oxide and garnet with grit sizes ranging between 60 to 120 for silo cutting fine particles and for high depth of cut coarse particles are used nozzle orifice diameter in this process is larger than wjm process so that high flow rate and energy of the jet can be achieved and water pressures are almost same as in wjm and nozzle diameter has to be slightly bigger in this case so that there is no clogging also of the uh, orifice now uh, 
AWJM consists of four important subsystems that is pumping unit like in the water jet, similarly a brushu water jet nozzle, a brushu feeding system and catcher. Important factors affecting the processes are water pressure, nozzle diameter, size and concentration of the brushus and feed rate, stand up distance, workpiece material, mixing tube that means diameter and length, angle of cutting, traverse speed and number of passage. Applications are cutting meters, e.g. copper and its alloy, tungsten carbide, lead and aluminium and non-metals can also be cut like concrete, graphite, silica, glass and acrylic and cutting sandwiched honeycomb structural material used in aerospace industry. Other industries using this process are nuclear, iron, automotive construction etc. Slotting is a major application of this process. So these are the Ebrasu water jet machining operation and uh, uh, advantage is that because water is there not much thermal damage is caused it removes the heat so it is uh, it doesn't produce much residual stresses particularly it doesn't cause thermal damage and pure water jet also has been used in food industries suppose you can even cut the breads etc by means of the water jet machining okay so this is uh, the, uh, that process now I am only discussing about the mechanical processes in which mechanical energy is there that means there is a physical contact between the medium and the workpiece. So a brushu flow machining process is another type of such type of process. In a brushu flow machining we do polishing and deburring of workpiece with the use of a brushu particles mixed in a viscoelastic polymeric medium we can usually call it a putty. The polymeric medium consists of silly putty and generally silicon carbide particles are used as a brushes. Then mixtures of a brushes and polymer is called medium. So which flows onto the work surface under the pressure ranging between 0.7 to 20 megapascal that means 7 atmospheric pressure to 200 atmospheric pressure. It is suitable for finishing of complicated shapes on internal and external surfaces. So this is one example that suppose this is the work piece you are seeing that work piece is there and uh, uh, there are two opposing pistons they reciprocate so that means a brushu medium is reciprocating and in that process it finishes the bowl of the work piece. A FM set consists of two opposing cylinders the work piece is fixed through a work piece fixture in between them and the medium flows through the workpiece from one cylinder to another cylinder to maintain a constant viscosity of medium and external cooling device is used to maintain the upper temperature and tooling is used to confine and direct the flow of medium inside the workpiece for selective polishing of workpiece. So this is, uh, this is shown here. Process variables are extrusion pressure means how much pressure I need to imply the number of cycles, then stiffness of the medium, then workpiece fixture configuration, abrasive size and concentration. And applications are rounding the sharp edges of workpiece and polishing the rough surface of a casting. It is mostly used in industries like automobile, aerospace and die making. It is used for uniform finishing of both metals and non-metals for internal and external surfaces. Now see this is a helical gear before and after machining finishing by a brushu flow machining. This is a nitro alloy coral. This has been also machined. Then this is a brass nozzle. Then this is a knee joint Im implant. Before that it was finishing having this much but after we machined it has become like this. So this is a then another process is that magnetic brushu finishing process. In this process finishing forces are controlled by an externally applied magnetic field. So suppose this type of thing, brushu plus magnetic particles are there and this is a rotating magnetic pole, this is a rough workpiece surface and by this you are controlling this thing, workpiece with magnetic polarity opposite to that of tool is there. So between two poles these particles are magnetic particles are moving and they are machining. This type of finishing process uses a brush 
comprising ferromagnetic particles, a brushu particles and a binder that gets formed due to a magnetic field. So, it makes a small brush type of thing. So, this magnetic brushu finishing brush contacts and acts upon the surface irregularities of the workpiece. Magnetic flux density is a function of type of magnetic pole, shape and size and workpiece material. Now, on increasing the value of magnetic flux density, surface finish improves and rate of material removal also increases. The material of the workpiece can be magnetic or non-magnetic in nature. You can actually put uh, even if it is non-magnetic, you can make another pole of the another material and vibratory motion of the tool can be obtained by oscillating the magnetic poles relative to, to the work. Then surface finish can be improved by increasing flux density, increased machining time, higher workpiece traverse speed and a smaller working gap. Applications are used for polishing of balls and rollers, finishing of inner tube surface, removal of oxide rail, polishing of fine component like printed circuit board, removing the bar in gear and polishing of complicated shapes. It is also used for finishing the internal and external surfaces of cylindrical workpiece. Types of operation that can be performed on the workpiece are finishing, rounding the edges, deburring and introducing residual compressive stresses. Now magneto geological finishing process. In MRF process, finishing force by each abrasive particle in the medium is of the order of 10 to the power minus 9 Newton. So, magneto rehorological finishing process will use some magneto rehorological uh, medium which will change its viscosity depending on the magnetic field. So, uh, forces are of very small order. A smart magneto rehorological polishing fluid is utilized that usually comprises carbonyl iron particles, then abrasive particles and carrier medium and additives. So, we make this type of uh, fluid and then this is suppose ultra, we can even impart ultrasonic vibrations to that uh, magneto rehorological fluid. So, suppose this example is there, there is ultrasonic generator that is additional item imparted, but you may not have ultrasonic generator sometime. Okay, it is ultrasonic generator, horn is there, electromagnet is there, workpiece is there, workpiece holder is there, dynamometer is there and then CNC milling machine bed is there. So, this is how that is uh, there. So, it is uh, that type of process. So, a nozzle is used for depositing a mass fluid on a rotating wheel having a spherical shape. The rotating wheel transports fluid and uh, a mass fluid ribbon is formed on the wheel surface, a mall fluid behaves as a bingham plastic material uh, fluid where yield stress varies with applied magnetic field. Pressure is generated between converging gaps by the flow of stiffened mall fluid and workpiece surface. Applications are finishing of lenses made of calcium fluoride and fused silica that is common application. Then magneto rehological abrasive finishing process. So, this is uh, this one, this figure actually, mag this is normal considering shearing in ultrasonic assisted, this is actually magnetic abrasive finishing process. So, this is actually really uh, uh, not magneto rehological finishing, it is because I have not shown anything, this is basically magnetic abrasive finishing only, but there is a, I am giving the ultrasonic vibration, but this one is uh, magneto rehological finishing. And uh, in this uh, magneto rehological abrasive flow finishing process um, uh, in MRAF in MRAF process magneto rehological polishing fluid is transferred through workpiece using two opposing cylinders in the presence of a magnetic field in the polishing zone. So uh, that means uh, magneto rehological fluid is also there and abrasives are also there. Rehological behavior of MR fluid changes during entering and exiting the finishing zone from Newtonian to Bingham plastic and again changes to Newtonian fluid and selective abrasion takes place due to applied magnetic field. The workpiece fixture is used to flow the MR fluid 
from one cylinder to another cylinder and hydraulic system is required for reciprocating motion of the pistons to simultaneously flow the polishing medium in two cylinders a constant pressure throughout the finishing operation is maintained so these are the processes and another operation is elastic emission machining this is so called elastic emission machining it was about a, a tease that it was invented it removes material with atomic level of accuracy by giving the work piece a mirror type of finish usually that uh, very small sized uh, uh, powdered particles are there and they are uh, doing the cutting with a small force acting on that so it is machining is by means of elastic fracture so in elastic emission machining a polyurethane material bar is used and is mounted on a shaft which is driven by variable speed motor rotational axis is usually inclined at an angle of 45 degree with the polishing surface the work piece is immersed in a mixture of zirconium dioxide or aluminum dioxide if you particles and water the material removal happens at atomic level due to the powerful interaction of the brushu particles with the atoms of the work piece without the introduction of any dislocation or plastic deformation the process has similarity with chemical leaching and removes the material mainly by elastic fracture at atomic level application sar producing uh, atomically stress free and smooth surfaces of optical materials such as 4hsic adaptive by morph mirror and silicon carbide is is a sidal mirror in x-ray microscopy which is a ring shaped effective focusing device can be polished by this process mirrors used for synco synchrotron radiation uh, beam are fabricated using this process because forcing focusing of a synchrotron radiation beam requires atomically flat and perfect mirrors so these are the applications now i am switching over from this topic to another topic till now i discussed about the mechanical type of advanced manufacturing process in which uh, by means of the forces material is uh, removed there are stresses generated on the surface of course even if it is elastic emission machining there is fracture occurring but now i am going to discuss those processes in which material removal is taking place due to melting and vaporization so there are some advanced machining process in which material is removed by melting and or vaporization uh, example is electrical discharge machining in traditional edm that is called die sinking because it makes a die type of thing different shapes are formed by using an electrode having negative replica of the shape to be generated on the work piece so suppose it is i am generating this type of shape here now this is uh, we have taken a node work piece and that is tool is a cathode feed direction so tool is cathode work piece is a node and we are generating the spark here and then there is a dielectric fluid which may be even kerosene or any other such type of things that is being pump this is the symbol of pump it goes from here and it passes and again it passes through the filter so pulse direct current power supply of 80 to 100 volt is applied intense electric field is generated at the narrowest gap between the tool and work piece electrons move towards the anode that is work piece and ions move towards the tool dielectric fluids like kerosene and deionized water are used to create path for discharge so discharge occurs at the location of the minimum gap between the work piece and tool discharge occurs and material gets vaporized which is flushed away by the flowing dielectric fluid edm machine comprises power supply dielectric system cathode and anode and servo system servo system will maintain a constant amount of a gap means it is basically it will take a feedback and power supply contains solid state rectifier that converts ac to dc edm machine is equipped with cut off protection circuit and in case of any over voltage or over current power cuts off dielectric fluid functions as an insulating agent in the inner electrode gap except at the time when ionization occurs in the presence of a spark it flushes debris out from the gap 
between workpiece and tool. The important process parameters are current voltage frequency of current inter electrode gap and duty cycle. Common tool used material are copper, graphite, brass and tungsten. Graphite being the most preferred, but we can may have the tool of copper etc. And applications are tool fabrication as well as for part production, then making dies for molding, casting, extrusion, wire drying, stamping, farming etc. It is used in making tooling for plastic injection molding and machining thin and fragile components. Now a variant of this electrical discharge machining is wire EDM in which basically the tool is in the form of this is wire basically a spark is conducted between this in this process a wire of small diameter is used to cut a narrow curve means cut in work piece cutting path is achieved by feeding the wire to work piece like a band saw during cutting operation wire is advanced between supply pool and take up pool to get fresh electrode for better accuracy and constant narrow curve Wire EDCM system consists of power supply, dielectric system, wire positioning system and drive system. For positioning system, two axis table CNC machine is used. So, applications are making stamping dies. Curve for cut generated in this process is narrow that it can be used to machine punch and die. Tools and parts with complex shapes like extrusion die can be made. Tolerances as small as 0 0.07 micrometer can be achieved. So, these are the process. So, this is a electrical discharge machining based on basically melting and vaporization of the material. Electron beam machining is also such type of process in which a stream of high velocity electrons is focused on the workpiece to remove the material by melting and vaporization. You can see it is a high volt, uh, voltage cable, but this process requires vacuum. And then there is a cathode, here the electrons are coming and they will be directed towards a node. Then these are the walls which will actually focus, these are magnetic lens because you have to focus but it is not a light, these are electrons which have got the charges. So by means of magnetic field I can focus and then magnetic deflection coil is here and then work piece. So it can make some holes or it can do any. Uh, other machining operation. EBM process needs a vacuum chamber in order to avoid collision of electrons with the gas molecules. Application is drilling of holes of high aspect ratio down to 0 0.05 mm diameter and cutting of slots. So, very small diameter hole like 0 0.05 mm can be made. One drawback is of the process is that it needs vacuum. So, it is a very expensive process as such. Usually you may get one machine of something like of the order of 10 crore or something. These are the rough estimates. Then laser beam machining is uh, you everybody is familiar with laser that is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So laser is a coherent beam of light which is monochromatic in nature. A lens can focus the laser beam in a very small diameter with much higher density. Material is removed in this process by using light energy of beam which has the potential to, to remove the material by melting and vaporization of the material. Now you see that here this is beam you may use some mirrors to focus it there working table may be like CNC type of this thing and then after that uh, you have to say you are machining and uh, on the work piece. Nowadays there are in fact femtosecond lasers which have got pulse duration is very very small in that. Now L, um, three important elements of laser device are raging medium, pumping energy source required to uphold these atoms to high energy level and optical feedback system. For feedback mechanism parallel mirrors at the two ends are used one fully reflective and another partially reflecting mirrors. Feedback mechanism captures and redirects a few coherent photons back into active raging medium. LBM is utilized for the materials having high strength and hardness like ceramics, glass and glass epoxy, cloth, plastics, rubber wood etc. Applications are drilling, slotting, scribing and marking operations and 3D micro machining. 
इट कैन बी इफेक्टिवली यूज फॉर ड्रिलिंग होल्स ऑफ डायमीटर पॉइंट जीरो टू फाइव टू पॉइंट फाइव एम एम सो पॉइंट जीरो टू फाइव एम एम आल्सो कैन बी होल कैन बी मेड विच मे बी आप पॉइंट जीरो टू फाइव एम एम विच मीन्स इट इज अबाउट ट्वेंटी फाइव माइक्रॉन एंड पॉइंट फाइव इज ऑफ कोर्स इट इज अबाउट फाइव हंड्रेड माइक्रोमीटर सो फाइव हंड्रेड माइक्रोमीटर एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव एंड प्लाज्मा आर्क मशीनिंग इट इज आल्सो सिमिलर टू रेजर बीम मशीनिंग बट हियर वी आर यूजिंग ए प्लाज्मा सपोज वी हैव ए टंगस्टन इलेक्ट्रोड एंड विच कैन बी प्रोवाइडेड विद दी डी सी सप्लाई ए स्ट्रीम ऑफ प्लाज्मा प्लाज्मा इज बेसिकली आयोनाइज फार्म ऑफ द गैस इन विच देर आर आयंस सो स्ट्रीम ऑफ प्लाज्मा टेम्परेचर दैट इज टेन थाउजेंड टू फोर्टीन थाउजेंड डिग्री जनरेटेड टू कट दी वर्क पीस पी प्लाज्मा आर्क यूज डी सी पावर सप्लाई एंड प्लाज्मा आर्क कैन बी ट्रांसफर्ड आर नॉन ट्रांसफर्ड सो इट इज टू टाइप ऑफ पावर सप्लाई आर दे आर ट्रांसफर्ड एंड नॉन ट्रांसफर्ड सपोज इन वन वर्क पीस इट सेल्फ इज इन दी नॉन ट्रांसफर्ड इन दी ट्रांसफर इन दी वर्क पीस इट सेल्फ इज एक्टिंग आई जे वन इलेक्ट्रोड एंड इन अन इधर दैट सपोज दिस इज टंगस्टन इलेक्ट्रोड बट अदर इलेक्ट्रोड इज हियर सो नॉन ट्रांसफर टाइप ऑफ आर्क हैज लोअर इफिशियंसी सिक्सटी टू एट्टी फाइव परसेंट दैन ट्रांसफर्ड आर्क टाइप एंड इलिमेंट्स ऑफ पी एस सी सिस्टम आर पावर सप्लाई गैस सप्लाई कूलिंग वाटर सिस्टम कंट्रोल कंट्रोल एंड प्लाज्मा टार्च इलेक्ट्रोड मटीरियल्स आर जलकोनियम हैफनियम एंड टंगस्टन एप्लीकेशन कैन बी कटिंग ऑफ फ्लैट मेटल शीट्स एंड प्लेट्स इट कैन बी यूज फॉर पियर्सिंग होल पी एस सी कैन बी यूज टू कट मटीरियल लाइक प्लेन कार्बन स्टील स्टेनलेस स्टील कापर एंड एलमोनियम एंड बाई यूजिंग प्लाज्मा आर्क सिस्टम डिफरेंट शेप्स कैन बी फार्म ऑन दी वर्क पीस नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू टेल लाइक इलेक्ट्रॉन बीम वी कैन हैव ए फोकस्ड आयन बीम बट हियर दी मटीरियल रिमूवल इज नॉट बाई थर्मल एक्शन इट इज वादर बाई स्टपरिंग is is potting action so it is is potting takes place suppose incident ions are there it is hitting the work piece surface and it is removing the atoms so high velocity electrons are released from a cathode and as it moves towards the node it gets hit with the fluid in the plasma region the ions of the gas liquid get accelerated and bombarded the work piece material when the um, ion energy is higher than that of the binding energy of the atom the work piece atoms are removed so applications can be focused ion beam machining is used in electronic industries where precision plays a vital role nano finishing can be done using this process for hard and brittle materials like ceramics semiconductors and diamonds then finishing of medical instruments is possible with very high precision in this process now i am going to discuss about electrochemical machining so this is quite different from the previous processes here it works on the faraday's law of electrochemistry suppose work piece is a node and two is of cathode connected to negative one and this is positive one and then this is electrolyte then uh, which may be like typically naoh ओके सो दीज आर मेटल हाइड्रोक्साइड सो दिस इज ओ एच आई एन आर दे एंड देन व्हाट हैपेंस दैट दीज विल बी जनरेटेड सो व्हाट हैपेंस दैट इफ करेंट इज सो मेटल डिजोल्यूशन फ्रॉम द वर्क प्लीज टेक्स प्लेस इट इज हियर दैट एम प्लस आई एन आर रिमूव्ड एंड दे आर दीज आई एन दे एक्चुअली कैन गो दैट साइड एंड यू कैन मेक हाइड्रोजन गैस इज इवाल्व at h2 so this is the process and this will be shown here in this material is removed from electrically conductive material with the help of anodic dissolution and shape of the work piece is same as that of the tool so very high amount of the surface finish can be obtained in this principal of this process is based on the faraday's law of electrolysis different elements of aecmr power supply tool and tool feed system electrolyte cleaning and supply system work and work holding system then rectifier is used to transform a high voltage power supply into low voltage and high current power supply 
देन पूल मटीरियल शुड हैव हाई मशीनिबिलिटी कंडक्टिविटी एंड कलूजन रेजिस्टेंस वर्क पीस शुड बी इलेक्ट्रिकली कंडक्टिविटी बट वर्क होल्डर शुड बी इंसुलेटर विद गुड थर्मल स्टेबिलिटी एंड लो मॉइस्चर ऑब्जॉर्बन सो ओनली इलेक्ट्रिकली कंडक्टिव मटीरियल्स कैन बी मशीन अप्लीकेशन इट इज यूज फॉर मशीनिंग वर्क मटीरियल ऑफ वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स जेमेट्री इट इज यूजफुल इन डाई सिंकिंग मल्टीपल होल डिलिंग एंड डिबरिंग देन टिपिकल प्रोडक्ट्स मेड फ्रॉम ई सी एम आर टर्बाइन ब्लेट्स कलविनियर स्लाट्स एंड गियर्स एक्सेट्रा इट प्रोवाइड्स वेरी गुड सर्फेस फिनिश ए वेरियंट ऑफ दिस प्रोसेस इज इलेक्ट्रो स्ट्रीम डिलिंग इट इज ए स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ ई सी एम विच इज यूज फॉर ड्रिलिंग ड्रिलिंग ऑफ हाई एस्पेक्ट रेशियो थ्री हंड्रेड टू वन होल्स ऑफ लेस देन वन एम एम डायमीटर सो एस्पेक्ट रेशियो कैन बी दैट मच हाई दैट मीन्स लेंथ ऑफ द होल कैन बी थ्री हंड्रेड टाइम दैन इट्स डायमीटर इलेक्ट्रिकली निगेटिवली चार्ज हाई वेलासिटी एसिड इलेक्ट्रो लाइट स्ट्रीम यूज फॉर द ड्रिलिंग ऑपरेशन टू डिफरेंट ई एस डी टेक्निक्स आर जनरली यूज फॉर ड्रिलिंग दैट इज पेनीट्रेशन ड्रिलिंग एंड डेल ड्रिलिंग इन पेनीट्रेशन ड्रिलिंग इज यूज फॉर मेकिंग डीप एंड एक्यूरेट होल एंड डेल ड्रिलिंग इज यूज फॉर मेकिंग सैलो होल्स सो एट द सेम लोकेशन इट रोटेट्स फॉर सम टाइम एंड इट मेक्स दिस वन सैलो होल्स अप्लीकेशन कैन बी इट यूज फॉर ड्रिलिंग वेरी स्मॉल होल्स कर्ड होल्स एंड होल्स एट स्टीप एंगल मशीनिंग ऑफ फ्यूअल नोजल्स मशीनिंग ऑफ हायर पैसेजेस मशीनिंग ऑफ स्मॉल होल डीलिंग रेगुलर एरे ऑफ होल इन कलोजन रेजिस्टेंस मटीरियल ऑफ लो मशीनिबिलिटी टू मेक होल्स इन दियरिंग फॉर आयल पैसेज वेल ई डी एम कैन क्रैक दी वर्क पीस देन आई डिस्कस अबाउट केमिकल मशीनिंग इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल मशीनिंग यूजेज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बट हियर इट इज प्योर केमिकल एक्शन हियर मटीरियल इज रिमूव बाई यूजिंग केमिकल ईचेंट देर आर सेवरल वेरियंट्स ऑफ द प्रोसेसेज केमिकल ब्लैंकिंग केमिकल मिल्डिंग फोटो केमिकल मशीनिंग एंड केमिकल इनग्रेविंग इफ यू हैव मेड एनी सर्किट इन द पी सी बी प्रिंटेड सर्किट बोर्ड प्रॉब्ली यू मस्ट हैव यूज द केमिकल मशीनिंग एक्चुअली विच रिमूव दैट सर्टन मटीरियल सिलेक्टिवली सो इट इज क्लीनिंग इज फर्स्ट डन बिफोर केमिकल मशीनिंग एनी वर्क पीस द सर्फेस ऑफ द वर्क पीस शुड बी क्लीनड ऑफ सैंड एंड ग्रीज then masking is done to protect you. it is basically protective cooling applied on work surface earlier sometimes we used to work on the printed circuit board and we used to put some nail polish in those areas where we did not want the material removal rest of the places the copper coating used to get dissolved so like that masking should be there it should be applied to those surfaces that are not going to be etched and etching This is the step involved in removal of material. Part is immersed inside etchant bath, and etchant attacks the unmasked surface. Etchant chemis chemically reacts with the material to remove it. After desired amount of material is removed, then work piece is withdrawn from the etchant bath, and then finally we do demasking. That means we remove the demasked material. Like in the PCB, we used to remove the nail nail polish by slightly by using some blade. to take it out and in this step so mask is removed from the work piece so that's how chemical machining occurs it is showing that schematic diagram that it is it contains that some bath in which etchant is there and work piece is covered with a maskant which may be of complicated shape and sterile is there which will steal this one so that effectively the chemical will flow and area to be machined is mentioned here and then finally it works masking materials include pvc polyvinyl chloride neoprene polyethylene and few polymers polymers and the common agents are fecl3 feno3 hf and hno3 so high each rate minimum undercut com compatibility with the mask high dissolved material capacity and ease of control are the properties which an agent should possess so these are the properties and various chemical etching processes are as follows chemical milling it is used in aircraft industries by removing material from aircraft component for weight reduction sometimes we use in aircraft industry then we use chemical blanking this process is conducted on thin material which has maximum thickness of 0.75 mm 
इट इज सुटेबल फॉर हार्ड एंड ब्रिटेल मटीरियल्स आन विच एनी शार्ट ऑफ मकेनिकल मेथड्स ऑफ मशीनिंग वुड कास्ट फ्रैक्चर एंड देन केमिकल इनग्रेविंग इट इज यूज फॉर मेकिंग नेम प्लेट्स आर फ्लैट बोर्ड्स दैट हैव लेटरिंग ऑन इट आर अदर आर्ट वर्क देन फोटो केमिकल मशीनिंग इज लाइक ए केमिकल मशीनिंग ओनली बट हियर ए फोटो रजिस्ट मास्क इज यूज इन स्टेड ऑफ ए नॉर्मल मास्किंग मटीरियल इन केमिकल मशीनिंग प्रोसेस ए फोटो रजिस्ट इज ए अल्ट्रा वायलेट फोटो सेंसिटिव पॉलिमर सप्लाइड एज ए लिक्विड आर ड्राई फिल्म एंड इट इज यूज टू प्रोड्यूस एन इमेज ऑन मेटल वेन द फोटो रजिस्ट हैज बीन एक्सपोज टू अल्ट्रा वायलेट रेडिएशन इट बिकम्स इन सॉल्यूबल इन ए ड्यूलपल सोल्यूशन एंड एड हर्स स्ट्रांगली टू द मेटल सर्फेस टू फार्म एंड ईच एंड रेजिस्टेंट कोटिंग वंस द फोटो रजिस्टर हैज बीन इमेज टू प्रोड्यूस एंड ईच एंड रेजिस्टेंट पैटर्न कोटिंग केमिकल लीचिंग इज यूज टू ट्रांसफर दैट पैटर्न इन टू द मेटल बाई सेलेक्टिव रिमूवल फर्स्ट द रिमूवल ऑफ द डस्ट आयल डिबलिश कंटिमिनेंट्स एंड ग्रीज इज डन केमिकली नेक्स्ट द फोटो रजिस्ट कोटिंग इज डिपॉजिटेड द कोटिंग इज डिपॉजिटेड बाई हार्ट रोलिंग ऑफ द फोटो रजिस्ट मटीरियल अगेंस्ट द मेटल देन द मेटल चीट्स आर प्रोसेस्ड इन सेफ येलो लाइट इन्वायरमेंट एट दिस स्टेज The process is done under vacuum condition in order to avoid air bubbles in between the metal and photo tool layer. After machining, the photo resist is removed using NaOH solution. After removing photo resist, the metal is rinsed and cleaned initially with normal water and then with deionized water. Applications include integrated circuits. Red frame is manufactured using this method, which is used in electronic industry. then uh, this is chemical mechanical polishing this is basically chemical as well as mechanical action is there this is shown that silica slurry is there it is coming through this this is a polishing conditional and this is a polishing pad this is some wafer which you are going to machine so this is a wafer chuck and you are machining that wafer so in this uh, important material removal mechanism is the reaction occurring between the slurry and the work piece surface and um, the polishing pad is attached to a rotating plate like this this is polishing pad and polishing slurry is supplied on it by a slurry delivery pipe like this it is coming from here a planetary motion is generated between the rotating polishing pad and si wafer silicon wafer reacts with aqueous solution forming a thin soft layer of silica which is then removed by mechanical action of the abrasive abrasive in polishing slurry so that is uh, the erosion of the wafer layer happens due to the relative motion between the slurry particles and wafer applications are thin film transistor technology to produce defect free surface it has been adopted in semiconductor manufacturing industries for planarization of the silicon wafer so this is uh, i have discussed about various type of processes and uh, i just have given type of exposure and uh, for further reading you can refer this my chapter that is advanced machining processes by manas das and us the chit introduction to mechanical engineering in this book it is contained you can uh, get that one otherwise you can read any book whatever the textbooks i have specified in the beginning like uh, they will contain particularly uh, gk lars book of machining will not contain this one but it can it is contained in the book by hosh and malik and uh, other books are there there is a book of vk jain which is uh, on advanced machining processes in that you can get to know so this is basically that co it covers that complete course it covers 20 lectures and uh, i have discussed basic machining particularly how to find out the cutting forces how to find out the surface finish how to find out temperatures mostly i have discussed the analytical models particularly uh, we discussed the three dimensional uh, cutting mechanics also uh, but this you have to understand many times because understanding it from a 2d screen those things are not so it is so unless you work it out many times you will really not get uh, understanding of 
थ्री डायमेंशनल फोर सिस्टम सो दैट टाइप ऑफ थिंग बट इन स्पाइट ऑफ दैट आई वुड से दैट दीज एनालिटिकल मॉडल्स दे हैव देयर ओन लिमिटेशंस आई हैव डिस्कस्ड इन द बिगिनिंग दैट व्हाट आर द बेसिक गवर्निंग इक्वेशंस बेसिकली यू हैव टू सॉल्व द स्ट्रेस इक्वलिब्रियम इक्वेशंस कॉन्स्टिट्यूटिव इक्वेशंस एंड स्ट्रेन डिस्प्लेसमेंट रिलेशंस देन यू कैन डू द थिंग्स बाय एफीएम बट इवन बाय फाइनाइट एलिमेंट आल्सो द ऑप्टेनिंग द प्रॉपर सॉल्यूशन इज नॉट सो इजी बिकॉज देयर आर लॉट ऑफ अनसर्टेनिटीज अनसर्टेनिटी अबाउट द मटीरियल बिहेवियर एट हाई स्ट्रेन रेट एंड हाई टेम्परेचर एंड सो दैट बिहेवियर इज आल्सो नॉट वेरी क्लियर सो देयर इज अनसर्टेनिटी इन द मटीरियल बिहेवियर देयर इज अनसर्टेनिटी इन द फ्रिक्शन इन फैक्ट इवन देयर इज अनसर्टेनिटी अबाउट द कटिंग मकेनिक्स सपोज यू आर डूइंग दैट माइक्रो मशीनिंग देन कटिंग मकेनिक्स इज समथिंग डिफरेंट इन माइक्रो मशीनिंग द कटिंग मकेनिक्स मे बी डिफरेंट इट मे डिफर फ्रॉम मटीरियल टू मटीरियल इन इन सम मटीरियल्स वन मिस इज शील्ड क्राइटेरिया मे बी वैलिड इन सम मटीरियल्स इट इज नॉट वैलिड सो वी हैव गॉट सो मेनी लिमिटेशंस नेवर द लेस मेनी टाइम्स दीज मेथड्स विच वी हैव डिस्कस्ड प्रोवाइड ए गुड क्वालिटेटिव अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड द रिजल्ट ऑप्टेंड कैन बी फाइन ट्यून्ड बाय मीन्स ऑफ द एक्सपेरिमेंट्स एटलीस्ट दे प्रोवाइड दैट प्रॉपर बेसिस फॉर डिजाइनिंग आर ऑप्टिमाइजिंग समथिंग बट द रिसर्च इन दिस मशीनिंग एरिया इज स्टिल गोइंग इट इज वन दैट टाइप ऑफ फील्ड इन विच आई वुड से दैट द इन ए वे दैट ए पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ रिसर्च हैज गॉट सेचुरेटेड नॉट बिकॉज वी हैव नोन एवरी थिंग बट आर द नोन मेथड्स हैव बीन ट्राइड एंड देयर मे बी ए नीड ऑफ सम वर्क थ्रू दैट मीन्स इंटायरली न्यू टाइप ऑफ थ्योरी बाई विच वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड बेटर नाउ वट इज अदर टेक्निक्स आर आल्सो दे आर लाइक मालिक्यूरल डायनमिक सिमुलेशन इन दैट वी एन राइज द एटम बाई एटम एंड बिहेवियर इज अंडरस्टूड at the molecular level however that uh, such type of systems are still not very practical because first of all they require huge amount of computational time similarly you have um, that uh, uh, crystal plasticity models they will capture the anisotropy behavior but even then here the computational time and proper understanding of the various of physical variables is an issue so all these things are there but i hope that this uh, course has provided with you proper exposure and it has provided you with an ability to think scientifically to understand the process to understand what is going on this thing so we started with a uh, explaining you the concept of a wish shape tool and then after that we have moved to the various variants of the machining processes conventional machining processes and then finally we have also given you exposure about advanced machining processes so this way this uh, as a package of 20 lectures this course has uh, provided a sufficient exposure and an ability uh, for you to continue your learning process because learning is a lifelong process thank you